Hello and welcome to A Quest for Metal. Today we're going to be reviewing the latest Ginger album, Macro. Now they had an EP, Micro, which was absolutely fucking amazing. I loved that EP. It had Perennial on, Teacher Teacher, so many good songs. Uh, I say so many, it's only an EP, so there's only about four songs on it, but each song was absolutely fantastic. And this is the follow-up to that. Macro, of course, you got the Micro, the little one, now you've got the Macro, the bigger one. So it fits that there's a lot more songs on this than there's an actual album. Now, I love Ginger. Every song they've done, pretty much I love everything they've done. I love the previous two albums. And this third album is no different. It's absolutely amazing. That's a spoiler, straight ahead. Tatiana's vocals are just angelic when they need to be, demonic when they need to be. You got the best of both worlds with her voice, and the music as well is incredible from everyone. So let's get stuck in with some things I liked and some things I didn't like. Now, let's get the negativity out of the way, the stuff that I didn't like. The first half, I'd say the first, yeah, the, oh, no, the first three quarters of the album is stellar, it's absolutely amazing. The last couple of songs, I'm not the biggest fan of. They're not bad. I really enjoy them, but compared to like the amazingness of the other songs, the last, I'm going to say the last two, I just kind of, they're all right. They're okay. And I'm probably going to do a song ranking for this album because it's always fun to rank stuff. That's what I like doing on my channel. So I'll probably go through the weakest to the strongest and just let you know that the couple of last couple of songs on the album are probably going to be the last in my list for the ranking. Now it's not to say that they're bad because they're still really fun as I said. They're great songs. Nothing on this album is a bad song. It's just compared to some of the songs on the album there are others which are a bit weaker but you get that with a lot of albums you know. That's not just something attributed to just this album because every album like Power Slave by Iron Maiden. You've got you know Power Slave, Ram and the Ancient Mariner, Two Minutes to Midnight and then you've also got like Back in the Village. And I think The Duelist, can you guess it? Is that on that? But yeah, you've got songs like that, and it's kind of like, yeah, there's a bit of yin and yang there. It's similar, similar to this, you can't win everything, but I'm very pleased with the majority of this album. So let's do our song ranking from weakest to best. Now the weakest is the last song, which isn't really a song, it's more like a outro. So I guess it doesn't really count that much, and it's, Line Erep, which backwards is perennial, which, as I said before, is a fantastic song. I wished it was on this album because I love perennial. It's one of my favourite Ginger songs. But my actual, just randomly, my actual favourite Ginger song is I Speak Astronomy. I love that song. Her cleans in that are just something extraterrestrial. I love it. I Speak Astronomy is fucking amazing. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Line Erep. It's okay, it's the weakest song, it's not quite a song, so it's got to be last because it's an outro, you know? It, it has to go here. The other songs, are obviously, I'd rather listen to more than that. So that is the weakest. Second weakest, so the actual song, which I think is the weakest, is The Prophecy, which is actually like the last song on the album as well. Which is what I said, like the last couple I'm kind of iffy on. And this is the song that I think is the weakest, probably. Um, it doesn't ha quite have the hooks of a lot of the other songs, because a lot of the other songs have parts which I'm like, whoa, instantly remember. I don't really remember this one as much as a lot of the other songs in the album, but that's not to say that it's bad. It's actually a really enjoyable song. It just doesn't have those hooks or that drive as the rest of the songs in the album. And that's why it's the, that's why it's the weakest. I do, however, really love the ending. The ending is super melodic. Like, I love it. Ending is fantastic. But overall, it's a bit too chaotic, a bit too... Yeah, I guess that's the right word. It's a bit too chaotic compared to the real, lot of the other songs which have more melody and a better structure, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that is the, probably the weakest song for me, personally. It might be your favourite, so if it is, then good for you. Next up, Noah. This is a, a lot better song. I really love this song. It's just the other songs I prefer a bit more. This has like this catchy kind of riff in it, and the riff is just so riffy. You know what I mean? It's so riffy. <laughs> I, I, you know the riff. If you've heard the song Noah, you know the riff and it's super catchy. The only thing I'm not too keen on is the chorus, 
where she does kind of the high shouty vocals. I'm not a big fan of them. I prefer the low growls or the clean singing. Um, but the high shouty growls, I'm not the biggest fan of, which is probably why it's the second weakest for me. But it's still an amazing song. I still, still give it like an 8.5 out of 10. Next is going to surprise some people because it is a single. They had three singles, and this is one of them, the first one, Judgment and Punishment. Now, this had a lot of mixed reviews from a lot of people. A lot of people didn't like it because it sounded so different. And I was in that camp. I did not like this song at first. I was like, oh, what is this? What is this? But now I've grown to love it. I love the reggae. My favourite part of the song is the reggae-influenced part. The way when she's singing the reggae parts. That's my favourite part of the song. Absolutely love it. I just, the only reason it's here is I prefer all the other songs over this one. I do think this is the weakest of the three singles. I do much prefer the other two singles and we'll get to them. But this one, you know, it has that uniqueness about it. So I have to love it. And it's, you know, it's like a 9 out of 10 song. It's really fun, really catchy. It's just personal opinion. And personal opinion, I prefer the other songs on this album compared to this one. But it still is an amazing song, and I'm happy that they branched out and did something completely different. Next up, Home Back. Oh, I love this song. This song is absolutely fantastic. I love, like, the, the swing kind of section in the middle where she's singing in the kind of swing way. I don't know if that is the actual genre, but it sounds like that. 10 out of 10. Love that. From then onwards, I'm just like, this song is fantastic. And I swear at one point, after that, she just goes, blah! And I... <laughs> I love when singers just go bleh in songs like black metal or whatever genre. Whenever they go bleh, it's amazing. I love it. And this this is no different because she does do... It does sound like she does that in the song. But this swing section, it does make the song and it makes the song better than Judgment and Punishment, in my opinion. Just that I love the... I love her clean singing. It's absolutely out of this world. And this has that so... Good job. Speaking of clean singing, Pausing Death has an amazing clean section by Tatiana and it just blows your mind. I love it. Just as soon as she starts singing the clean sections, it takes you to another world and a really nice world, you know, with pina coladas and free money, free chocolate. is a world where you want to be. Now let's talk about the ending. It's probably the heaviest, probably the heaviest, in my opinion, song on the album. And it's got the heaviest fucking ending and the best ending on the album. Hands down, it's the best ending on the album. She just, they, the band just goes absolutely mental. And that ending with the riffs and just how heavy and chugging everything is. It's just, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. It is absolutely fantastic. And uh, what more can I say? That ending alone makes this song better than all the others that I've talked about. The ending alone and the clean section alone just... Pausing Death is a fantastic song, so give it more time if you haven't, because I listened to this album, I've listened to it about five, six, about six times. First time, I was like, oh, this is okay, I prefer the other albums, this is alright. Second one, I was like, okay, getting better, getting better, and then third time, I was like, okay, shit, these songs that I didn't quite give time to are actually growing on me, and this is one of them. Pausing Death is definitely a grower, not a shower, so if you didn't like it at first, keep giving it listens and it'll grow because it's an amazing song. Three songs left, what are they gonna be? And you know, two of them is gonna be the singles. Let's get out of the way, Pit of Consciousness, the latest single they released, and the video is fantastic by the way. Holy shit, this song is amazing. I much prefer it to Judgment and Punishment, even though that's more, you know, more unique. This is more standard ginger affair, but Fuck it, I love Ginger, so Standard Ginger Affair is amazing to me. And the heaviness in this song, the grooviness, the riffs, the singing, it has it all. Like, the riff in it is just so chugging, you just want to stomp around to it. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. You want to stomp around the room to this fucking song, because it is balls to the walls, insane, and it's one of the best singles, but not quite the best. We'll get to that now. So number two is going to be... So number two is going to be on the top. The second single they released, I think it was the second single, but yeah, phenomenal song. Catchy as hell, the chorus is catchy as hell. I just love, I love the chorus. The chorus is so good. 
riffs in it are so good. The chorus is so good. I mean, the song itself is so good. It's probably... I'd say it's, it would be a lot of people's top pick alongside... I think a lot of people would like the reggae one as well. But th- I think this would be probably second or first for a lot of people. And it's second for me. Really love this song. It's a great single. Great single. The best single out of the three, in my opinion. Because just the chorus is just so catchy. And it's just fun. It's like a lot of the other Ginger songs. you got that catchiness to it. Plus the heaviness. It has the meld the mesh of both of the worlds and it makes it perfect now coming in at number one there's only one song left so you know what it's going to be it's retrospection it's not even a single it is a random song from the middle of the album and it is absolutely incredible the intro to this just the beginning of the song 10 out of 10 10 out of fucking 10 the riff in it 11 out of 10 the riffage in this song is just mind-blowing. Best ginger riff I've ever fucking heard. One of the best riffs of the year, in my opinion. And probably the best intro of the year as well, I'm going to say. Hands down, she speaks... I think it's in Russian. She speaks in Russian. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if it's like Ukrainian or something, but she sings in Russian, which is already amazing, because I love it when singers branch out and do stuff like that. And... It's so calming and soothing. And then it fucking drops and hits you with the heaviest shit. And the scream kicks in, the riff kicks in, and it blows your brains out the back of your skull. This song is a 10 out of 10. This song is a fantastic song from start to finish. And the start just punches you in the gut. And it doesn't just do it once for the intro. It comes back again, and she screams again, and the riff hits again, so... You get more bang for your buck, pretty much. This song is just phenomenal. This album is amazing from start to finish. Again, I only have a couple of complaints. That's only the, like two of the songs. Um, and one of the songs is just an interlude. So I guess it's just one song I'm kind of... Eh, it's okay. But the rest of the songs in this album, fantastic. So overall, Macro is just... It's well worth your time. It's an amazing album from an amazing band. And hopefully they keep putting out amazing material. And I really want to see them live. I need to see them live. They're playing Bloodstock this year, so I might I might go because uh, Behemoth's headlining. So that'll be a good that'll be a good show. That'll be a good fucking day. So yeah, that was my review of Macro. I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. Amazing album. Amazing album, and you should definitely check it out. So tell me what you thought in the comments below about the album Macro. What do you like about Ginger? And what's your favourite Ginger song as well? Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.